The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. Greetings, greetings this morning. Greetings to you this morning from Minnesota, the state of Minnesota. I want to welcome you, uh, those who are finding their way here. Come on in, come on in. Get ready for a brief word from the Lord. Uh, meet me here. Uh, I'm just going to just give you a few minutes as we come in and and um, and get our spiritual feeding for this morning. So I want to greet those of you who are on uh, YouTube and uh, those of you who are coming in to Facebook Live. Uh, meet us here. I want you to meet me here at the table. Come on, family. Come on in. And because uh, you know what? Uh, the, the table is already spread. <laughs> the meal is being served this morning. Good morning, Gertrude from South Africa. Good to see you on this morning. Come on to the table, you guys. Come on to the table for your spiritual feeding family. Uh, the table is spread and there's a feast going on over here. We're going to have a quick meal this morning. We're going to get it digested, but we're going to eat and run this morning. We're going to eat of God's word because I don't want anyone to leave malnourished. That's just the way it is. I want you to get fed. I want you to be able to digest it and all of that. <clears throat> and um, that's what I want you to do. Good morning, Alicia from Atlanta. Good morning. Good morning. I, I want you all to come on in, family. You know how you look for your family. You'd be telling them, come on, y'all. Come on in. Get, come on to the table now while the meal is hot. <laughs> while the meal is hot. So we want our spiritual feeding is hot. The word, we're ready. We're ready to eat of God's word, be spiritually fed. And uh, we want to leave, you know, full. So I'm just going to let you all know that, yes, we got a, I have a brief message this morning. I'm on the road. I'm in the state of Minnesota. I have to w do worship this morning for the conference and, and to pray and all those things. And, and so, uh, so I, I have to be there a little earlier uh, because they start at 10 o'clock. And so I have to, but I'm not far from the, the location, the venue where the event is. And God is just so good. He's blessing um, hearts are being, I mean, the joy is overflowed there. And I was just thinking yesterday, uh, what David was saying to the Lord, uh, in your presence, we find the fullness of joy. And I just love that. I just love that. So I just want to thank you. We're going <clears> to <throat> get right into the word of God. What is, what is really good morning, Brian, good morning, Brian. Brian is here with me on the road. He flew in from Nashville, and so he's here to help me carry things on and to help us at the conference. And you know how it is. Sometimes you have to have your people, whether they're your roadies or your, or a lot of ministers have body guys too. <laughs> so I have to have some help, you know, getting my music right because, you know, many times they don't get the music right. And so you got to have your person with you and they can get it right for you and they can't get the words right for your message, they get it right for you. So anyway, let's just jump right in. What is really going on in the house of the Lord? Every Sunday, countless people all over the world sit in church buildings with a false sense of security. They assume that their morality, their lifelong church membership or baptism will earn them a place in heaven. It's a lot of people think like that. I do. You can talk to them about salvation in Jesus Christ and they'll say, well, I do good. Well, what is that? Well, I help people and I do good. But you don't have any belief in Jesus Christ. But I, but I do good. I can help the people that said they start saved and they're Christian because I do good. But if you keep thinking like that, uh, you know you 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 will see where you're going to end up because you'll be one of those Jesus said, I never knew you. People be saying, well, you know, I cast out demons, but Jesus said I looked at your heart, and I was I wasn't sitting on the throne of your heart. You know that they assume that their morality and their lifelong church membership and baptism were earned them a place in heaven. While many of these folks securely desire to please God, they are confused about what the Christian life is all about. They think in terms of doing rather than being. So they imitate the actions of good Christians, going to a weekly service and praying and reading the Bible and trying to be decent people. However, salvation is not the product of good works. We come into the world with a corrupt, a corrupt nature. And all our wrongdoing is born of a heart turned away from the Lord because we are sinful people. We sin. It's that simple. The good news is that in the salvation experience, we are given a brand new nature. 
That's in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Our sin is wiped away because Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for us. From the moment we trust in him, the Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts so that we can live righteously. The world values action. But let me say this. I say it a lot <clears throat> recently. The world, they value action. But the Father prioritized relationship. He's a relational God. He wants a relationship with us, a personal and intimate relationship with us, specifically a right relationship with, with him because he's looking for the righteous. People who scurry about flaunting religiosity are missing out on the deeply satisfying and joy, joyous intimacy between a believer and the Lord. You can ask a person, are you a Christian? And the first thing they say is, oh yeah, I go to church every Sunday. I I'm confused. What does that have to do with anything? I, I go to church every Sunday. So that makes you <laughs> a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ <clears throat> and a Christian. Okay. We can help turn up this tragic misunderstanding into triumph by being ready to explain why we have hope. In 1 Peter 3.15, speak of the personal relationship. Because I say, ooh, you know, if I miss my morning, I commune with him and communicate. And I say, ooh, ooh. And my husband said, what's wrong with you? I said, ooh, I, I miss, oh, I got to go. <laughs> I got to sit down. And and I, it's like, he's like, you got an appointment. I have. Because I crave for his word and I crave for him. And so I'm like, it's like an intimate relationship. You miss you, meeting your husband, miss meeting your, 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 your person you're dating, miss meeting your wife and your girlfriend. You say, oh my goodness, I didn't call them. Oh, I get a call so I can get, well, that's how it is. Oh, I miss my morning chat with God. Oh my goodness, let me get this right. Let me come into his presence. He said, you'll find the fullness of joy in my presence. So we, so we speak of the personal relationship with Christ as possible when a person admits his need and trust in the Savior. I need him every day, every hour, every second, every minute. You hear me sing the song, Lord, I need you. You are one defense. If your light shines, it reflects well on the church. If people see it shining, if they see, because all of these things are God's character. Even the joy is, is a fruit of the Spirit. It's the second fruit of the Spirit. And so we talk about that. So at one time or another, we have probably heard it to pray effectively is to pray in the will of God. If we were, because some people don't want to pray in the will of God because they don't want, they, they want to do it their way. They, they said they pray, but they want to do it their way. So they don't want to pray in the will of God. Sometimes they don't want to say it, they will not say it because they want it to go their way. If we were God, God is our source of the good and necessary things in life, as well as we should. James tell us <clears throat> there are two reasons we do not have the things we need. Ye have not, and you all often hear me say this, because ye ask not. Well, so you have not because you ask not. Ye ask, and here's the second, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. You got a little motive behind there, okay? So you don't get it. Because you ask in a miss, you, you ask because you got a, a, a hidden agenda. You got a motive behind there. So you consume it upon your lust. That's in James 4 and 2 and 3. John Gill states that to ask a miss is to ask not in the faith of a divine promise, nor with thankfulness for past mercies, nor with submission to the will of God, nor with the right end to do good to others and to make sense of what might be bestowed for the honor of God and the interests of Christ. We don't pray for that. Good morning, Wilmers from Wisconsin. To that end, some of us end our prayers with the words of Jesus. Not my will, but thine be done. And I just add a little bit more to mine. I just said, not my way, but yours, Lord. Not my will, but yours. Because we still sometimes want to do it our way, not my way. Not my will, but thine be done. In Luke 22, 40, uh, 42. And you say, but what, what exactly, what does that mean? The life of Jesus while he was on earth was a pattern of wanting to do only what God wanted to be done. I'm telling you, if we do what he wants to be done, if we consult with him first, a lot of things in our life, the woulda, shoulda, coulda, uh, we, can, we don't even have to look back at it. We said, well, that was then. Now I know better. Because when you know better, you do better. But the life of Jesus while he was on earth was a pattern of wanting to do only what God wanted to be done. To his disciples, he affirmed, 
my meat, my purpose, is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. It wouldn't it be wonderful just to say to, to Christ, just to say to the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want for my life? What is, what is it that you want me to do? And what do you want? That's, that's how we should come to him. Not what we want, not my way, not my will. Lord, what do you want? Because I know right now his heart is breaking because we're doing everything but what he wants us to do. So his heart breaks because we want to do it our way. He said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. This is in John 4, 32. In other words, his sole purpose was to do the will of God. We can see that in Hebrews 10 and 5, uh, chapter 10, verse 5 and 10. And everything about him and his life lined up with his purpose. Can we say that? Even when facing death by what was then the cruelest of methods, which is crucifixion, he yielded himself to the will of the Father. Fast forward now, over 2,000 years later, and there you are in prayer. We have a large laundry list of petitions of things we really want and or need. Good morning, Claudia from North Carolina. Good to see you on this morning. We have a long, we have a, a laundry list of petitions of things that you we really want or need. Do you trust your own judgment? Or do you trust God that what he wants for you transcends anything that you could ask or imagine for yourself? Ephesians 3 and 20. It is not easy to yield our will to that of the Father. Just ask Jesus. His Gethsemane struggle was of such that there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as if it were great, great, uh, great drops of blood falling to the ground in Luke 22, 43 and 44. Yet for those who desire to be at the nucleus of God's will, is there really any other way to pray? You, we want to get into a dialogue while we pray, but, but you see God, but see, this is how it is, God, but you see. We don't have to ask God, do you see? He knows and sees everything before we even ask. So we're trying to get in a dialogue with him, but yeah, Lord, but see, I, I know you, God, but see, Lord, if we do it, this, but see, Lord, I know this person like me, and, I, and I'm in love with them, but see, Lord, see, we need to get somewhere and sit down. Is there any other way to pray? The flesh that seeks to satisfy itself is constantly at war with the spirit that strives to do the will of God. I'm going to say that again. The flesh that seeks to satisfy itself is constantly at war with the spirit that strives to do the will of God. Galatians 5.17. Some of God's finest statements of our time have said much on the issue of praying in the will of God. Pastor and author A.W. Tozer puts it this way. To pray effectively, we must want what God wants. That and that only is to pray in the will of God. I'm going to, I wish I had some people listening because some people need to hear this. Who's not on here, but they need to hear it. To pray effectively, we must want what God wants. That and that only is to pray in the will of God. We have the um, uh, Gunville, a Beethoven. The late uh, Anglican uh, Dean of Johannesburg reminds us, you are not drawn to God primarily for your own benefit, but for his. Good morning, Sharon from Wisconsin. Yes, that will be done. He says, you are not drawn to God primarily for your own benefit, but for his. But for his. Good morning. I think that is Javon or Jawan. Anyway, good to be here. Let us know where you're from. We thank God people are coming all over the world. The chief, the chief purpose of prayer is that God may be glorified in the answer. And here we are thinking it is primarily about us and our needs. That's what we think. We're praying to him for things because we got this laundry list of things we want him to do. And we think it is primarily about us. No, it's not about us. It's about us to a degree. But you and we're not drawn to God primarily for our own benefit, but for his. And then we understand that the chief purpose of prayer is that God may be glorified in the answer. But yes, a lot of people walk around and think that it's all about them when they pray. Not my will, but thine be done. Seven important words we need to bear in mind the next time we come to our Lord in prayer. While he can work all things for our good, 
Romans 8, 28, 29. It is never about us. It is and must always be about him. His will be done his way in our lives. And we'll see some, some things being productive. In Proverbs 18 and 10, Solomon wrote that the name of the Lord mm, is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. What exactly does that mean? How is the name of the Lord a strong tower? What is a strong tower? We see some of these tall watchtowers we see in different areas and locations of the United States and other areas. To understand how the name of the Lord is a strong tower for us today. We'll break the verse, I'll break the verse down into four parts and go deeper into each. The name of the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? A name is a powerful thing. This was more widely understood in ancient time than it is now. But it's still true, nonetheless. A name carries the identity of the person named. It is who they are. In Proverbs 18.10, the word used for Lord is Yahweh. So it can be read the name of Yahweh is a strong tower. This is speaking of God's character, the entirety of who he is. Throughout the Bible, it refers to God himself as our strength, our rock, our fortress. God and his name are one and the same. Good morning, Ruth. You missed us last week. Well, I'm so glad to see you back. Come on to the table, darling. Get, take your seat. That's right. When you hear the name of someone you know, well, you know we can hear somebody's name. Why are not they related to this person? I know that name. You have an inner vision of them. I think I know that person because the name carries all that you know about them. This means that a name carries a person's reputation. We can see how God's name or reputation preceded him in the book of Joshua. When God was leading Israel into the promised land, Joshua sent men into Jericho to spy out the land. They were discovered and protected by a woman named Rahab who made this declaration to them. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven, above and on the earth below. That's in Joshua 2, 10, 11. By faith, Rahab tapped into the name of the Lord and she and all her family were kept safe when the city of Jericho was destroyed. And I tell you now, I, I, when I went to Israel, I think I mentioned this to you all before. This to you all before. Nothing is there. And the tour guide kept saying, JP, why do you want to go to Jericho? Nothing is there. I just want to go. I want to see the ruins. And I tell you, they said, okay, we never put this on a tour, but we'll take it because you want to go. And what is there? Absolutely nothing but ruins. That's it. It's gone. Okay, so we just sit in some little spot and, and talked about uh, Rahab and Jericho and what went on. So he, the, they were kept safe. Rahab and all of her family, not just her, but all of her family. How is the Lord, the name of the Lord, a strong tower? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Some translation use terms as fortified tower, strong fortress, mighty tower, tower of strength. And in one translation, it simply says great strength. A tower is something that is tall or high. The name of the Lord is high. Let them praise the name of the Lord because his name is high above all others. His glory is above heaven and earth. Psalm 148 and 13. The tower is strong. Strength is manifested in numerous ways. Words the dictionary used to convey how strength is conveyed are physical, mental, competence, influence, moral power, effectiveness, healthy, means to resist attack uncompromising, well-supplied, clear, and firm and thriving. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. It is high above your problems, providing all you need. That's what we need to know. The name of the Lord is a strong tower because it is high above my problems, my situations, my challenges, my obstacles, providing all that I need. Well, who is righteous? It said the righteous run into it and they are safe. Well, there are two things here. The righteous, referring to the person and the action run. Who is the righteous this verse is talking about? 
Righteousness, according to the Bible, is being in right standing with God. Are we in right standing with God? This is something no one can achieve on their own. For anyone to attain righteousness, they must receive it from God. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Because people want to brag, and they're bragging a minute. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Romans 5, 17. Would you say, Alicia, right standing from God? You know, God sent one out to find the righteous and could only find one. We want, to, we want to be a part of the righteous. What is the significance of the action run? Running is simply faster than walking. However, the word used in the original text implies urgency. It is more accurately translated rush or hurry, how it's written in this translation. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. A righteous person runs, rushes to it and is lifted up above the danger. Can we feel safe in the strong tower? What does it mean to be safe? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. The verse above says, lifted as I shared, in, uh, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Righteous person rushes to it and lifted up above the danger. What does that mean? Lifted up above the dangers. We were looking at Romans 5, 17. The dictionary defines being safe as protected from or not exposed to danger or risk, not likely to be harmed or lost. Other translations of the verse uses words like set on high, set safely on high, be safe, is safe, shall be exalted, shall be strengthened, and are protected. And looking at the word of the original language, we get these phrases here, inaccessibly high, too high to capture, and set on high for above evil. In the verse that follows Solomon, identifies an imaginative place of safety. Here it says, the wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it a wall too high to scale. Proverbs 18 and 11. Imagine safety isn't true safety. The name of the Lord is where we find true safety and protection are found. We try to even try to go to church to find safety. And sometimes that's where our problems start for some people. They tell what happened to them in the church. We run to our boss, to the job. We run to this person, that person. And we think even our spouses, and we think that's where our true safety is supposed to be. We hope that we got some safety, but we realize that true safety and protection is found in the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. When we are scared, when we are ill, when we are lost, when we are confused, when we are sad, when we are threatened, when we are weak, when we are overwhelmed, and even when we are struggling financially, always the safety that the name of the Lord provides is multifaceted and trustworthy. He's faithful to his promises. You can trust him in everything, in all things. No wonder the righteous rush toward it. If it does all those things, it provides all those things as multifaceted. Good morning, KK from the UK by way of Jamaica. Good to see you on. No wonder the righteous rush toward it. By faith, we can rush to the name of the Lord and find safety at any time. We, call, we can call on his name. The name of the Lord represents all that he is and has for us love, mercy, grace, power, righteousness, and more. David called on the name of the Lord throughout his life and tasted the deliverance of God. And here are a few examples. From the ends of the earth, I cry to you for help when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the towering rock of safety, David said, for you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. That's in Psalm 61, 2 and 3. Hear me, my God, as I voice my complaint, protect my life from the threat of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the plots of evildoers, Psalm 64, 1 and 2. Deliver me from my enemies, O God, be my fortress against those who are attacking me. Deliver me from evildoers and save me from those who are after my blood. Psalm 59, 1 and, uh, 1 and 2. The Lord is my protector. He is my strong fortress. My God is my protection and with him I am safe. He protects me like a shield. He defends me. 
and keeps me safe. Psalm 18 and 2. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwellings. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high up on a rock. Psalm 27 and 5. Call on the name of the Lord. Three times it is written that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Joel 2.32, Acts 2.21, Romans 10.13. Where you say, Ruth, to be safe in the towers, to be more and more like him. He is our safe place. He is our safe place. He is. I talk about that. We, we, we think certain, well, I'm going to this place, so this is my safe place. No. The Lord. He's my protector. He's my safe place. That's who I run to. I run to him. Keep caught. Let me tell you something. The enemy, we already know they trembled and Satan and his demons when you call on the name of Jesus. I don't know, like I said, what's going on in the church. We need to be calling on his name all day long. The old saints, some of our grandparents if we would say it and the old saint, Jesus, Jesus. And you being a young person wondering what's wrong, is something wrong? And sometimes they call Jesus over you. They touch you as they pass by Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, because they know they're keeping Satan at, at bay. He's going to keep calling on Jesus. Keep running to Jesus. Keep running to the Lord. I promise you, Satan is going to leave you alone. He's going to leave you alone because why? They, he can't stand that name. He can't stand it. He literally hates it. And he hates us because we're going to be forgiven. We can be, he's, But he will not. And he can't handle the name of Jesus. And we just, we don't want to call on Jesus. People are afraid to call on Jesus' name. They, they're afraid to get, why are you scared to call on the name that's going to keep you safe? He will deliver you from out of the snares of everything. But you're afraid to say, Jesus, I call on him all the time because I know what Satan, you're going to leave me alone. Because I know what, how to get, I know what's going to bother you. He don't want you to call. That's why he's trying to silence people. He's trying to silence folks because he don't want you to call on the name of the Lord. He knows it's a strong tower. He knows that the righteous run to it. And that he knows that if they call on him, they're going to be safe. He knows, the enemy knows this. And so now he's just coming into the church, coming into marriages, coming into children, your children, coming into all these things, your health, your finances. Because he said they're not going they gonna to forget to call on Jesus. And some people will. When you say Alicia, Alicia, you put it all in capital letters uh, with some exclamation marks behind it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And just call on him. When you're sick, call on him. When you got any challenge, whatever you're running up against, call on him. Whatever the situation may be, call on him. Just call him. Because the word of God says... The, it says three times. It is written, call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. The name of the Lord, he's our protector. He's a strong fortress. Call on the name of the Lord. He's a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And they are safe. They, they are safe. This is not, not just something that I'm saying. Just to, uh, Yes, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to all of that. Call on the name of the Lord today. Whatever it is, the devil going to leave you alone because he, he going to run. He just going to have to run because he can't handle that name. It makes him tremble. It makes his demons tremble. And you just call on Lord. I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus. And he's going to have to get out the way. And he may try to creep back in. When you see him trying to creep back in, you just say, Jesus. And he has to flee. He has to leave you alone. We need to start calling. On the name of Jesus. Well, you said, Brian, sweetest name I know. Jesus. Yes. He's the sweetest name I know. You don't get me started now. Okay. So we just call on his name. Because Jesus is something about the name of Jesus. There's power in his name. The saint says something about the name of Jesus. The devil going to leave you alone. If we just start just calling on him, just calling on him and praising him, we'll, we'll be saying, he's the sweetest name I know. We'll be singing it ourselves because it is the sweetest name I know. Just calling on him. 
That's whoever missed the message, they're gonna miss it because I'm getting ready to get off. Because I knew it was gonna be a quick message, because I got to go and, and bless some more folks and share the word of God. But I want you to know the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Whatever you're going through, I'm, whatever it is, just call on Jesus. Jesus, because the devil wants to silence us and people are getting silent. They won't call, they're scared to say in the name of Jesus. They pray and won't even say in Jesus' name. They, they, they don't even want to say, and here we leaving out the most powerful thing that we have, the most powerful name to call on, we're afraid to say it. I'm going to call on him all because I, I need Jesus in my life. I know what he will do, just calling on his name. And I know the enemy going to flee. He going to be so mad. Why don't why they keep calling on him? Stop it. Stop it. Let me throw something in the way that I'm going to cut. Whatever it is, I'm going to still call on Jesus. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. His name is power in the name of Jesus. So I want you just to share the message, to come back and listen to it. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And that's where we are safe. Let's just call on him, say, family, call on him. Get back into when you're just craving his name that you just want to keep calling on him. And so I just want to say today, there may be someone on here who, I don't know, sometimes I can say I don't see everybody until after I'm off and I see some, but I think I saw a couple of people on that I had not seen your name before and I want to kind of know where you're from. And I just want to let you know if you're looking for a relationship with him, if you're looking to have a relationship with him, if you're looking to just be a part of that, I'm telling you, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You can just say, Lord, I surrender. I don't know what to say, but I'm calling your name because I know you're the son of God. I know you died and you're you raised again and you live today, Lord. And I don't want to sin, Lord. And I, I forgive me, Father. I repent. And, and, and repentance is not going back to those old ways and things you were doing. God is going to deal. He's going to change you inside and out. And you can ask for that today and receive it. What you say, Gertrude, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Yes, it is. And you can say that today, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died and rose from the dead and lives forevermore. And give your life to him today. You don't have to go on a long fast. You don't have to sit there and do this, this, and you got to turn flips and be all of these things or whatever, speaking in tongues. All of these things will come. In time, you get, and then you get into don't just don't take this. Get into a church that teaches the Bible, and teaches God's word, and get into a Bible study where you that teaches the word of God, and get your Bible. And if you need a Bible, let us know. Email us. We can't send them internationally. I wish we could, but it just get a little too expensive trying to ship them. But if you're here and need a Bible, we we have boxes of Bible that we can give out. And so we just want to thank you, cause God, I just don't want to leave here without giving somebody the opportunity. And for those of you who know that we rely on, you know, our viewers and our listeners to support our ministry and to God has been so faithful to us that he keeps us going, even though we just, you know, we, we have those that support us. And I thank those. I promise you from the bottom of my heart, I thank those of you who belong to other churches that have other churches and even ministries that you that you would take something and sow into our ministry as well. Don't do not think I'm taking it for granted. I thank you because you don't have to do that because you give to your local church as well. But I thank you for supporting Journey to the Word. And I ask you to pray today. If you haven't given, and if you just this month is almost be almost out and you haven't given for the month of May to sow a seed. I, I can, oh, and let me share this briefly. This month, the rest of this month and two weeks in June, testimony Wednesday and Saturday. And I tell you, I got some people coming on with some testimonies that you will be like, what? The goodness of God. Each week I'm going to have them on from everywhere that's going to share the word of God, how God has done. They're just going to share the testimony. We're going to do testimonies. And I tell you, I got my friend Vanessa's coming on to give testimonies and one, just different ones that are coming on to give their testimony. And they're going to share what God has done in their life. How God, I'm telling from the White House to Skid Row, I'm going to have those people on. Give, so people want to think, well, it's just a down and out and we just poor. No, no, no. We're going to, we're going to take it. How can you become, go from being a teacher and a, a famous singer, uh, well-known, well-known, and then you, and you're homeless. People are going to tell you, how can you not have a foundation in your house? And all of a sudden, God to put a foundation in and the conference to come back and say, what happened? Who fixed this? 
and God did it while you were praying. Things that God will, I'm telling you, that you will hear. That's going to be Wednesday. It's going to start off this next Saturday. And then it's going to be Wednesday and Saturday. And we're going to talk about testimony. People need to start giving their testimony. Stop sitting on your testimony that God has blessed you. Somebody else needs to hear your story. And so we're going to we're going to share the word of God with you. So I want to thank each one of you today. I want to get that about giving in. If you haven't given, just we have four ways to give. Please consider it. Pray and ask God to bless you. Step out on faith. I tell you, I got some people to step out on faith. It's just it's a blessing because they still they've become partners and they still into the ministry. So we thank God because he knows what we have to do. And we want to reach the masses and reach the lost. So thank each one of you. God loves you. I love you too. Be blessed. I got to get out of here. And uh, like I say, share the message. And I'm going to meet you here on Wednesday. Uh, I'll be here. I'll be back home. I won't be here because I'm in the hotel room. Uh, I'm giving my message. But I'm going to see you on next Wednesday. Be blessed. Have a great day. Share the word of God. God loves you. I love you too. And who am I missing here? I want to Ruth. Ruth from Monterey, Tennessee. Brian who's with me from Columbia, Tennessee, by way of Wisconsin and California. We have Gertrude from South Africa on. We have Alicia from in the uh, state of Georgia, near the Atlanta area. Uh, so she's on, she spoke on here before. If you all don't remember, she was powerful. And I got to get her back. She was powerful. We have KK from the UK by way of Jamaica, who's on. And, and um, who else do we have on here? Ruth and we have Sharon from Wisconsin. We have Claudia from North Carolina. Juliana, let's keep her in prayer. She has pneumonia. She shared that with me. We've been missing her. We got Wilma's from Wisconsin. We got Shirley, I'm quite sure, on uh, YouTube. And and Gail and uh, Devon, if I miss you again, I, because I keep missing your name. So those of you I may, I may have missed, let's see, Brian, Alicia, Gertrude, Ruth, and Wilma's, and Sharon, and Claudia, and the different ones that are on. I just want to thank you for being here with me this morning. Be blessed. God love you, and I love you too. And two